Sunjet 2A2, proceed directly to runway, backtrack, and hold. Today we're going to talk about Tenerife Airport disaster. This happened that shook the whole world, so let's go to a story. On March 27, 1977, KLM Flight 4805 took off from Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam with a crew of three pilots, Captain Jacob Velde was in Van Zanten, First Officer Klaus Meurs, and Flight Engineer Willem Schroeder. The flight's destination was originally Gran Canaria, but due to a terrorist attack, the plane was forced to divert to Los Rodeos Airport in Tenerife North. Another flight, Pan AM Flight 1736, was also en route from Los Angeles to Gran Canaria with a stop in New York. The crew consisted of Captain Victor Grubbs, First Officer Robert Bragg, and Flight Engineer George Warnes. As Gran Canaria reopened, both flights began preparations for the short hop to Gran Canaria. The KLM 747 was instructed to taxi down runway 12 and make a 180-degree turn to line up on runway 30, a procedure known as a runway backtrack. The Pan AM 747 was to follow and exit via taxiway C3 and use the parallel taxiway to taxi to the runway. However, this ability suddenly decreased from 500 meters to 100 meters as the Pan AM pilots entered the runway and they were unsure if the controller had said C1 or C3, making it difficult for them to identify the exit through the thick fog. As the KLM aircraft lined up, the captain began applying takeoff power but realized they did not have clearance. Communication between the pilots and air traffic control regarding clearance was exchanged, with the KLM crew being told to stand by for clearance. However, this last message was never received due to interference, and the KLM aircraft began rolling for takeoff. The Pan AM crew was then asked to call when they had cleared the runway, but the flight engineer on the KLM 747 raised the alarm with the captain, who dismissed it. As the two planes were seconds away from the collision, the Pan AM aircraft identified the KLM 747 through the fog and made a desperate attempt to get off the runway. The KLM aircraft attempted an early rotation, causing a tail strike and barely getting into the air. The KLM aircraft's nose cleared the Pan AM aircraft, but the right engines hit the forward part of the fuselage just behind the cockpit. The main gear hit the center of the fuselage while the left engines destroyed the empennage. The KLM aircraft managed to take off for a moment, but it quickly became unflyable and crashed 150 meters later. The aircraft was filled with fuel, and it instantly ignited. All 248 passengers and crew on the KLM aircraft and 335 passengers on the Pan AM aircraft perished. 61 people on the Pan AM aircraft, including the flight crew, managed to survive by escaping through the left wing of the aircraft and openings in the fuselage. The visibility from the tower was very poor, so the air traffic controller had no idea of what had just happened, and could only hear two explosions, one after the other. A massive investigation involving all three countries and both airlines quickly got underway, revealing the sequence of events that led to this disaster. This video is dedicated to the memory of the 583 people who lost their lives in the Tenerife Airport disaster and to their families and loved ones. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It would be a great help to the channel.